Okay guys, welcome. This is the new version of Corel 2022. This is a quick overview on just how to use the software nice and fast. We're going to try to keep this under 15 minutes. Okay, so when you open up the software, first of all, you're going to see here getting started, workspaces, and some other bits underneath. So getting started straight off would allow you to create a document, open a document that you've previously um, used, or um, from a template as well. So in there is going to be objects like brochures and catalogs. Workspace, if you haven't used it before, you might want to set up um, how your working environment looks. If you're used to using Adobe Illustrator, then uh, you can click on that. But let's just leave it as default for now. News, a bit of information about what's going on in the world of Corel. Uh, tutorials, brilliant in here. Plenty of resource on how to do this, that and the other. Store is good as well. These are all things that you can buy and download. And I like to keep mine ticked on free. Uh, here you've got the transportation pack, which is very handy if you are a sign writer and you want to do some vehicle graphics. But also there's some templates in here for brochures and so on. But we'll look at those in a bit more detail a bit later in some further videos. So let's go straight in, get started, open a new document, click on there. Now you can put a name in it here if you want to. Um, test new, testing new, test new. Um, we've got some color palette defaults in there. Let's leave that at custom. We don't want to mess about with it too much at the moment. Um, number of pages that you want and the pages will be um, identified by tabs running along the bottom here. So let's put two in just so you can see that. Custom size, you can have A4, you can have whatever size you want, and the measurements can be in millimeters, inches, pixels if you're doing web graphics. But for standard, let's keep it at 300 DPI, uh, A4, and let's click OK, and keep the orientation to portrait rather than landscape. So click that open, and you can see straight away, we've now got our A4 page. Now across the top here, a few little features. We've got new if you want to create another new document open and uh, drop down recent files um, save if you actually had drawn anything on the page so if I went over here and quickly put a box down you can see that is now highlighted delete that uh, print again if there was something on the page we could print it uh, we've got export as a PDF um, percentage size of what we're looking at here we can increase we could go page width we could go page height um, we've got snap to if we want to use a grid which is handy we can also view um, our rules and mesh background as well which can help us see different things so we can turn a grid on and off here from views and also snap to down here as well which can be annoying um, but it is very useful if you're reproducing artwork across the bottom here page size we can switch that into a3 a4 we can make it custom here orientation of the page, portrait, landscape, etc., etc. measurements of units, what you want to work in. So that's pretty much the top there. Once you've drawn something, you can go file, save as, and you can save that file wherever you want to. We can also import. If we want to import an object, that could be an image or a photo. Um, or some more artwork. Now running down the side, you have got your pick tool. That's something you're going to come back to all the time. Shape tool. And in the bottom of the shape tool here, you can see that there's a little fly out triangle. If you click on that and hold it, it gives you extra tools to see. And that's significant for most of the tools coming down here. So I don't want to go into too much detail on these tools. The ones I want to show you are just to show to get you started drawing. So we're going to use the pick, the um, select tool here, which is a shape tool. So this one is going to allow us to manipulate um, a vector image. We've got um, some drawing tools here, zoom and pan, um, free art artist sketch tool. So, and we've got some drawing tools here. Now freehand and bezier, bezier is my, my tool of um, uh, choice. Um, and then we've got some preset shapes, text, and then some um, manipulation tools there as well as as well as uh, like things like um, shadows and so on as well. Colors, color picker is excellent if we're trying to match colors. So let's start, come down first off to a Bezier tool. Let's click and we can click down once, then click again without releasing the mouse. We can create these handles that we can pull around um, to create the direction of flow for the actual um, 
vector that we're going to be drawing and as we come out of that we might want to go in a different direction and move all the way around until we come back to finish and close our drawing object um, and this is a vector so vector based object which is basically lines mathematical equations and that basically means that it is infinitely scalable it's never going to pixelate unlike jpeg if we had that and we wanted to blow that up we put it on the side of a bus from a from a passport photo it's going to look hideously pixelated but with inside uh, corel draw there is some uh, nice new um, scaling tools for bitmaps if you do have one and it does work really well to try and reduce the pixelation okay so i'm going to click on uh, this point here and you can see that the the node has changed from this um, small tool here which has got the box with a zig squiggly line either side me significating that this is a draw tool down to a arrow which is a close point at this point when you close it uh, you can come back to your pick tool um, and you can come over to the right hand side where we've got some um, color palettes loaded on here if you don't see these you can load the palettes in I'll show you how to do that at the moment um, clicking with the left mouse will fill the object and the right mouse will give the stroke or the outline color so there we sit so we did a black stroke on the top bar above that you can see here we can change the thickness as well um, that is scalable so if you were to increase the size of this that would become thinner as you made that object bigger if you wanted to retain that particular thickness of that black line there you would actually have to create a um, path for that so you'd have to say convert outline to an object in that case if you did that that would uh, make sure that this actually stayed that thickness in relation to this object underneath um, now we could here select a square now if you wanted to select a square it's not going to be a square it could be a rectangle or anything with four sides but if I hold down the shift key um, so the control key that will make that a solid square and you can see the size in change in here and you can see that it's actually the aspect ratio of that is equal in height to um, width so if I change that to 90 millimeters you can see now the, the width to height is 90 millimeters if I click the padlock and unlock it and did it again and changed one of them change that to 100 you see that the height stays 90 and the width stays 100 so that's now is probably more ev evident if I put that as 50 you can see uh, again we can do this with the circle click and drag um, sorry again click and drag undo is control Z um, and I'm going to press the control key to do a circle if I want to create a circle from the center point I keep the control and the shift down and that will give me that if I want to put another object inside it, another circle I can highlight that um, let's just delete this one this object here so I'm going to click on that press delete and click on this and press delete now these two objects here um, if I want to um, align them centrally and horizontally I would press C and E uh, C for the uh, central and E for the vertical alignment so when I've got that I can now press Control L which is combine which is different to group this is basically for grouping an object if I had a red circle here and a blue circle around the outside and I grouped it it would stay those colors but if I combine it so control L you can see that actually has now become one object which is the outside border the inside is now transparent and would need a separate object let's bring in a um, a polygon tool to the center of this um, you can see that it's actually snap into center of object I'm going to press the shift and control and click and drag out that is bang on in the center of that circle and here I'm going to increase the amount of points to eight but I want to make this a star so I'm going to come back and click on the shape and pull it in and that's going to give me that um, depth to the inner of the star now if I wanted to skew this I could click and drag the nodes to it <laughs> like that um, and let's make that a little bit smaller so it's not quite so sharp um, and if I wanted to increase the size of this um, I could click the 
shift and control and pull out. Sorry, the uh, shift only and pull out. And that's going to overlap that now. If I put yellow on that, what I could do in this is I could actually punch this star out through that there. So by selecting the two objects and by drawing a box around it, I can now um, intersect or trim it. So if I press that and I now click away and I go back, reselect my center object, I can pull that away and you can see it's cut those points out. Control Z, bringing it back inside. I can click on this and rotate it from the central point if I want to. If I wanted to rotate it from this point, all I'd need to do is click my center point there and put it on the tip of that star and now I can swing it around wherever I want. Ideal if I was making duplication points. So if I wanted to duplicate an object, I could click that to there. So let's go Control D. Control D. Control D, 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 D. And now you see that that will, if I zoom out by pressing F4 and keep pressing that, eventually it should come back. There you go. <laughs> so it's just something else you can do. Mess about. Control D is a very powerful tool. Um, if you had a square, drew a square, shift and control from the center point, making a square. Control D, um, click, move it here. Control D, D. Um, you can see that these might not be 100% aligned. Well, they actually are, which is pretty good, but I could highlight all of them and I could press E, which would guarantee that that is now central, right the way, um, centrally aligned or right the way through. If I pressed E, sorry, C, then it would um, stack them on top of each other perfectly. Let's say. Now let's just say this object, um, I want to add some color. So let's just get rid of those. Uh, I want to make the box red and I want to make the outline yellow. Um, over here is some dockers and if they're not here you can find the dockers by going to window and dockers and adding them back in. Um, so you can go to properties um, and then we can go let's give that a fill. Got colors, um, we've got a Fountain fill, we click on that, and you show, it shows here that it's going from black to white. Uh, we can change that color by clicking on that little box, and we can say, actually, I want this to be, I don't know, purple will do. And this one over this side, I want that to be yellow. So I click on there, it says white, click, yellow, put that there. Um, but in the middle, I want another color. You can use this slider, actually, to set how much the blend is and you can also um, lots of new features on this version let's go um, right so we can let's do something else quickly before we wrap this up um, objects this shows you the the layers so if you're used to using layers we can put in some boxes just to show you how layers work um, so we've got box one let's make that black box two, let's make that blue, box three, make that red. And you can see here now we've got the order of the boxes, how they stack up. Now, if we wanted the red to be behind, we could click and drag that and put it down underneath. Um, if you put it on top, like that, it's gonna make it group. So just make sure it's underneath there. Obviously you can't see that at the minute because it's on top, but if I reduce that, you can see it. Um, we can also, uh, what else can we do here? Um, we create a boundary around all of it if we were using a print and cut system, like a plotter with a cutter. We can highlight all of it and up here we can create a boundary. Now when I click on that now and pull that to one side, you can see I've got a boundary. Ideal if it's going to be a cut path for a printer. Now let's just say I want to export this because it's something the customer wants and I want a JPEG and I want an EPS. Um, a quick little tip here is let's just say that's one object, so we're going to group that. Um, I'm in the object here, I want to rename that to um, test, let's just say it because I'm not very original, um, and then go to the export feature here and click, because this object is selected already, um, that's going to call that test, so let's call that test um, PNG because I want this one to be transparent background, we can adjust the size in, resolutions, etc. in here if we want to, but let's just go PNG 
and also I want another one of these in here as well so I can click and um, import here on the bottom but this one I want this to be a EPS file so it's going to be a vector so it's exporting me a vector um, as an EPS and it's also exporting me a um, PNG with a transparent background you're going to select a folder and you are going to select that and you're going to hit export and job done that's off so when we open up that folder if we can find that exports there we go we've got some stuff there you all know delete them that's that so if we wanted to save this then all we just need to do is file save as job done okay so i hope you like this overview just give you a, a quick um few key features of how to use Corel Draw 2022 and we are now going to step into looking at doing um, a few more in-depth features so looking at some of the new features that we've got with inside Corel Draw 2022 also we're going to look at uh, setting up a fictitious company an electrical company designing a company vehicle some t-shirts some uh, business cards and some flyers and um, we're going to go through a little logo creation so stick with me don't forget to like and subscribe. There's going to be a whole series of these coming out. I love this new version of Corel Draw, Coral Draw 2022. And if you need to get yourself a uh, trial of this, then you can step over to um, Corel and download a 15-day free trial. And I'll leave a link in the description below. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm Ask Aidy.